the merits of Avalokiteshvara. Then the great Bodhisattva said to the Lord, Lord, is Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva, the great being, not coming here today? The Lord said, Noble youth, he is ripening, many hundreds of thousands of crores of millions of beings. Day by day he comes and ripens them. There is no such splendor, even of Tathagatas, as of Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva, the great being. In what way, Lord? The Lord said, In former times, noble youth, a Tathagata, an Arhat, a perfectly enlightened Buddha, arose in the world, named Vipasvin, endowed with knowledge and conduct, Sugata, knower of the world, a supreme charioteer of men to be tamed, a teacher of gods and men, Buddha, Lord. At that time and period I was a merchant's son, named Sugandamukha. Then I heard from the Tathagata Vipassavan of the virtues produced by Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva, the Great Being. What, Lord, was the production of virtues like, of which you heard? What was it like? May the Lord declare to me what the production of these virtues was like. The Lord said, From his eyes arose the moon and sun, from his forehead Mahasvara, or Siva, from his shoulders Brahma, from his heart Narayana, from his teeth Saravati, from his mouth the winds, from his feet the earth, and from his belly Varuna. When these gods were born from the body of Avalokiteshvara, then he said to the god Mahasvara, Thou shalt be Mahasvara in the Kali age, when the world of evil creatures arises. Thou shalt be called Adideva, the primal god, the creator, the maker. All shall be deprived of the way of enlightenment, who give such an account among the common people. But, noble youth, it is not possible to count the collection of the merits of Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva. For example, noble youth, I can count each single leaf in a forest of acacia trees, but I am not able to count the collection of the merits of Avalokiteshvara. For example, noble youth, if in the four continents of all the women, men, boys, and girls were to be set on the stage of the fruit of entering the stream, the fruit of once returner, the fruit of non returner, our hardship or private Buddhahood, their merits would be surpassed by the collection of the merits of Avalokiteshvara. Then Radnapani, the Bodhisattva, the great being, said to the Lord, I have nowhere seen or heard, Lord, of such an inconceivable collection of merits of Tathagatas, much less of a Bodhisattva, like the collection of merits of the Lord of Alokiteshvara. The Lord said, There might be Tathagatas, Arhats, perfect Buddhas like me, as numerous as the sands of the Ganges, staying in one place to be honored with robes, bowls, couches, vehicles, medicines, and requisites fit for the gods, and all of them assembled together could not count the collection of merits of Avalokiteshvara. Much less, noble youth, I, who dwell singly in this universe, how can I utter in speech the collection of his merits? And also, noble youth, all Tathagatas, with ten utterances, has said, those beings become happy in the world who remember the name of Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva, the Great Being. They become released from old age, death, sickness, grief, lamentation, pain, and dejection. They suffer not the unending pain of transmigration. Robed in pure white, like royal geese flying with the speed of the wind, they go to the universe of Sukhavati to hear the doctrine face to face with the Tathagata Amitabha. And, having heard the doctrine, the pain of transmigration no longer torments their bodies, nor do lust, hatred, illusion, old age, and death nor do the pains of hunger and thirst torment their bodies, nor do they remember the pain of abiding in a womb. There they are born in a lotus. 
They abide in that universe as long as the firm promise of Avalokiteshvara is not fulfilled, that all beings are to be released from all pains, as long as they are not established in supreme, perfect enlightenment. <laughs>